You've probably heard how dangerous it can be for girls to walk alone at night. Let strangers into the house. Or put too much trust in men they've only known a short while. But some boys don't know that men, and even women, can sexually attack boys too. Because they're boys and because they're at a certain age. An attacker doesn't look different from other people. He might seem normal and friendly. He might even be someone you already know. So no one can recognize these people just by looking. But you can protect yourself by taking simple precautions and keeping alert for signs of danger on the way. Hitchhiking, of course, is an easy way to get yourself in serious trouble. Many boys are attacked and sometimes killed by the people who offer them rides. Besides, the person who picks you up could be drunk or just a very bad driver. There's no way to know until you're already in the car. But attackers don't only pick up hitchhikers. Sometimes they'll trick boys into driving away with them. Dan and I were getting our, our papers ready to deliver. When we were just about ready to head out, the sky drove past on this really neat cherry red 10 speed. Right after that, this, this man drove up in a real hurry. He asked if we saw the bike go by and, and could we recognize it if we saw it again. We said, sure. Then he said that that was his son's bike and, and the kid that was riding it stole it. He wanted one of us to go along and help him catch the guy. Dan didn't think about it at all, I guess. But I wrote down the license number. I mean, it looked pretty funny to me. I rode my bike as fast as I could over to Dan's house. mom what had happened and she was real scared. She called the police and told them what happened. Then I told them what the guy looked like and what his license number was. Dan was real lucky. The guy was just about to leave town when they caught him. Unfortunately, not every dangerous situation is so easy to recognize and avoid. As Mike found out, attackers sometimes try to win a boy's confidence and trust before they make their move. day started off real bad. I had this big fight with my aunt about what time I had to be home at night. I was so mad I just slammed the door and left. There wasn't any school that day, so I just walked around. I saw this really hot Porsche sitting there. Bert was the guy working on the car. He started talking to me about it, sort of man to man, you know. 
He just rebuilt the carburetor and wanted me to start the car for him. Anyway, that's what he said. talk some more after that. He asked me how old I was and what I did in school. We even talked about girls some. He even gave me a cigarette, like I was a friend of his. I don't really smoke, but I didn't want to act like some dumb kid. It was getting kind of late, so I had to go. He told me I could help him work on his car the next day, if I had some time. I'm not exactly sure why I trusted him so much. I guess it's because he trusted me first to start his car. So I felt like he was a sort of friend. That must have been what he wanted. He was there the next day, just like he said. He was real glad to see me. I even brought him a magazine article I had about his car. But he didn't want to talk about his car. He asked me if I liked parties. Some friends of his were up at his place and I was invited. I really didn't want to go, but I figured if there wasn't any fun, I could leave. Everyone was drunk. I felt funny being there since everyone was a lot older. It got scary awful fast. There was no way for me to get out. What they did, there was nothing I could do. A chance to start an expensive sports car, a cigarette, and a little phony respect was all it took to make Mike forget that Bert was still a stranger. Someone Mike had no real reason to trust. Usually, it only takes a little common sense to avoid trouble from strangers. But boys can also be approached and sexually molested by adults that they, and even their parents, already know. I'm still kind of confused about it. I mean, I still like Mr. Galloway, and so do my parents. He was my baseball coach. Mom and Dad knew him for a long time. He lived right down the block from us, so he always took me home after practice. But one time he said he wanted to buy me a Coke. He was nervous about something. Mom told me later that he and Mrs. Galloway weren't getting along. When we were sitting in the car, he told some dirty jokes. I didn't think they were very funny. And I didn't understand some of them, but he seemed to like them. When we got home, he patted me on the shoulder and said I would have the body of a good baseball player when I got older.
That's when I should have told Dad about it. But really, nothing seemed that wrong. We had practice the next week. It didn't look like Mr. Galloway wanted to go home right away. He just stood around and looked like he was thinking. He asked me to stay for a while. He had these pictures of naked men that he showed me. I guess I was interested, but the guys looked ugly to me. That's when it got real weird. He put his hand on me and said we'd been friends long enough to have secrets together. I just split. I knew Mr. Galloway must have had some real problems. I didn't tell my parents at first. I thought for sure they wouldn't believe it, and I was scared they'd be mad at me. But then I thought about Coach Galloway. I felt sorry for him. He needed help. I finally told them. It wasn't easy, but they did believe me. After I told them how it all happened, Mom said she'd call some people to talk to Mr. Galloway. I think I did the right thing. He really is a nice man. It's not always easy to talk about big problems. And sometimes it's especially difficult to talk to your parents about them. But there are other people you can turn to. For example, a teacher or counselor, a police juvenile officer, family doctor, clergyman, or a crisis hotline listed in the phone book. Most of the dangers that boys face can be avoided with a little common sense. Don't get into a car with a stranger. You never know what kind of weirdo he could turn out to be. Watch out for guys who want to become your friend real fast. Even if he gives you stuff, he's probably just trying to make you trust him. And if he wants to take you somewhere, forget it. Especially if it's someone you already know. Talk to someone, fast, get help. The problem's not going to go away unless you do something about it. Not every adult who offers you a ride, asks for your trust, or becomes physically affectionate intends to attack you. But every boy must be aware of the dangers that do exist and take care to keep himself safe.